Hello, this is not a comprehensive introduction to Therm, it's just to get you started. When you open a new Therm file, there are two things you need to um, set or check. Uh, one is the size of your drawing boards, so go to Options Preferences, and 5000 by 5000 millimeter should be large enough for most details you want to draw. And the other is check that the uh, units are set to SI. Okay, you're ready to model, so click on the rectangle button and click with your mouse somewhere on the drawing board and then hands off your mouse and just use your keypad and key in 100mm and use your right arrow button to show this where it's going and then another 100 millimeters and your arrow down button and then don't forget to confirm with return now you have a column that's 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters and currently it's a radiation enclosure which does not make much sense for our modeling so we need to change this so go to libraries material library and click new and enter the name of the new material. We are after reinforced concrete here. And the reinforced concrete we are using shall have a thermal conductivity of 2.4. So change this. Um, then pick a color that you associate with concrete. And when you close this window now, you're asked to assign this new material to the previously generated geometry and yes confirm this now let's zoom out a bit zooming out is shift and right mouse click zooming in is just right mouse click and add another rectangle so go to the rectangle tool and key in a thousand millimeters to the right right arrow and 100 millimeters down and confirm with return and once again we'll need to assign a material to our geometry so go to libraries material library and this time we're using aerated concrete with the thermal conductivity of 0.24 watts per meter kelvin and we're choosing we're choosing a lighter gray color for this material and once again assign this on closing and let's just assume that this is the detail we wanted to model, um, a concrete column and some um, aerated concrete wall attached to it. So let's assign boundary conditions so that Therm can calculate the heat flow. So click on BC as in boundary conditions and by default all boundary conditions will be set to adiabatic which means no heat is flowing and is not what we want. So we need to create some boundary conditions that make more sense. So go to libraries again, but this time boundary condition library and let's set an exterior boundary condition. And let's say it's zero degrees on the outside. And we also need to add um, a film coefficient, which is the inverse of the surface resistance. So in our case, that's 25. And for the interior conditions, we are choosing to go with 20 degrees Celsius for the indoor air. And the inverse of the surface resistance here is 7.692. And you can also assign some colors for your boundaries to remember which is which. Now you have to assign those boundary conditions to surfaces. Once the boundary conditions are set for all surfaces where heat flow does occur, you can click this lightning bolt here and get a calculated result. By default, this will be isotherm lines, um, and you can zoom in a bit to appreciate them a bit more. Um, all right, that's it. It's just a quick getting you started video. 
and you can learn more about modeling thermal bridges in courses of the Passive House Academy New Zealand.